Hello YouTubers. I know it's been a long time since I've done a streetlight video. I haven't really gotten any more streetlights except these three recently. Now I did not get this from my CD or any of that, but actually these came from my uncle. Because a couple years ago my uncle bought this house. And it came with a detached kind of a garage slash shed structure. With an included car lift. That's right, a car lift. And inside of that garage, there was a stand with three of these fixtures on it. But he didn't want these fixtures because it was too bulky and, uh, and he wanted to save energy. So he offered me if I wanted to take them. So I saved them here. But these were sitting outside for, I want to say, eight months. And they did suffer a little bit of cosmetic damage. Except this one right here. This one's the best one out of all of them. I know you guys have uh, been seeing these videos circulate on the internet recently about blue, purple, or blue LED streetlights. And now I know that I've, I've seen them in Texas too, but it's been getting bad from what I'm hearing. So, But these, I bet these probably all still work with no problems. They did suffer some cosmetic damage. And, you want, and the biggest reason why this happens is because... If these make direct contact with the dirt, I don't know, something in the dirt causes the metal to kind of corrode like that and become all, I want to say crater, it just develops these craters and pit pitting going on. Kind of these deep craters. And the paint is lifted a little bit, as you can see. But, so if you guys decide to get street lights and you need to put them on the dirt temporarily please avoid putting them on the dirt otherwise that will happen i actually had another fixture in the past which i no longer have which is that hubble re rlc street light it had that same damage and that was because also because it was put in the dirt now i want to say this one and this one i think had the puddles in it i don't know about this one because i because I was there a week before and I took these off of the stand, which I'll probably put a picture of what it used to be on in the video. But these were facing up and rainwater was going through here because we've been getting a lot of rain recently. And it's, one of these had a really bad puddle on the inside. So like I said, I was there a week before and there was a fence line right there because, it, because his house is kind of on a plot of land out kind of in the desert that's why it's all sandy looking and i just lean them up against the wall like that on the fence line just to drain out all the water so there should be no water in these now there, there was no photo cells on, on these ones there i believe they were bypassed these are 100 watt hps fixtures and these ones are all made by ge they came with extension cords that were all wired up to it from the previous homeowner of that house. Now, I'm, and I don't know, I hope that the ballasts are not bad on these other two because of the conditions they are, because they're in pretty bad condition. But if that's the case, I got some of these adapters lying around. These E40 to E26 slash E27 adapters. So what that would allow me to do is basically reuse the porcelain socket that's in these, which is E40. I could bypass the ballast and hook the socket straight to the mains or straight to power. And I could probably, I don't know, maybe we might do some experiments in this video where I can put some party bulbs in these and just see what it looks like. Because I'm quite curious because I acquired some nice LED bulbs recently. <laughs> I'm not an LED hater here, but I know LEDs have their own set of issues too nothing's perfect but i know they're not as reliable as these fixtures i am aware those of you enthusiasts that love hps fixtures mercury vapor fixtures and whatnot so let me open these up so you can see what it looks like on the inside of all of these okay youtubers so i'm back here with all the fixtures open they are pretty this one especially is in pretty sad shape internally I don't know if that one's going to work, but I'll show you the damages here in a bit, but 
Now, that fixture and this fixture here, these are 150 watt fixtures. And they came with 150 watt HPS bulbs already, made by Sylvania, which I matter of fact, I got the one right here. This one is a Sylvania 150 watt Lumalux bulb. So, they don't look like they're a crazy, crazy high hour, but they're, they still got hours on them. You can tell by the arc tube. They got some hours on them. And this one here is 100 watts. The one is sat in the sad shape. And this one actually has a 100 watt bulb. So whoever acquired these fixtures knew their stuff. Which is great on them because most people, they just start slapping whatever bulbs in these things and they abuse the ballast or the bulbs. So good for them. Now these are all GEs. This is G part number there in case you want to pause the video and look at that. And then this one here, get that wire out of the way so you can see. So, now this one, the ballast is in pretty bad shape. And I cannot emphasize enough about the dirt. This dirt is basically just dust. It's just sand. Because like I said, where my uncle lives, he basically lives kind of in a mountain range area slash desert. And there's a lot of dirt there, of course, because where I live is Arizona, so that's the the sand of the Arizona desert. Right there, even all this dirt on the inside, but look at how bad that ballast is. That ballast is in pretty sad shape. Look, look at the iron core. This, this iron core is turning into this dust as I'm like gently scraping this with a screwdriver. The windings look to be okay, but a, tr a transformer has to have a real good iron core for it to work efficiently and properly. So, and I wouldn't be surprised if the coils start buzzing really loud because of the windings getting loose. I wouldn't be surprised if that varnish is worn off. This ballast is not too bad. It's a rusty on the outside, but not crazy. That one to probably work with no issues. And this one's kind of questionable. This one, the ballast is kind of turning into dust to the iron core. The capacitors look to be okay. They're a little rusty, but that doesn't affect the capacitor really. As long as the electrolytes and stuff don't <laughs> leak out and air gets on the inside. So those appear to be fine. My starting components look to be okay. And then we just got extension cords here, which I didn't do that. That was the way out they came. So what I'm going to do next, and this will probably be in the next video, divide this into two parts. I'm going to splice in a power cord in, in on one of these fixtures at a time. So I got a chopped up power cord here I got from a lamp, and I'm just going to splice them all into one fixture at a time just to see if they are in working condition or not. And I'm gonna hook up an additional ground fault circuit interrupter in between. So there is a nasty short, it could trip that device out immediately. So obviously we're not starting fires because we don't want that. As far as the cosmetic conditions go on these, I do have a plan, but I'm not gonna fix it right now. I'll probably be in the near future. Whenever that could happen, but I was given this Bono body repair kit. Stuff is about a year old, so it's still good. It's a two-part solution. A two-part mixture type of thing. So this is the Bondo paste itself, and this one is the hardener. So you take, you scoop out how much of that. The paste you need, you put some drops of this hardener onto the paste and then you mix it around, kind of like JB well if you're not familiar with that. So it's one solid color, I believe it's supposed to be a light pink. Now that is meant for steel, but this is, I believe this is like a magnesium type of metal, which is why it, it's corroded this bad. Like, okay, this paint is just flaking off like no other and peeling away, but 
I do plan on removing all this loose paint as much as possible. It is not totally like that. It's just in some areas like this. And this part was partially sunken into the ground, the dirt that caused all this. And the rain is the key factor why it's, it did this. Because these were outside for eight months. See? There's more of this stuff on the inside. But I plan on scraping all this loose paint off and putting that Bondo paste all over this. And then sanding it down and hopefully just, I don't, it, and I know some of you lighting enthusiasts may not like this idea, but spray paint the back of the fixture to kind of hide all this, to kind of seal that Bondo into place. But I might end up giving one of these to a friend of mine that's in the street lights. Oh, only if he's interested in it, but I for sure am going to keep that one. These other two, I don't know. I just hold on to them for right now, mess around with them. So, yeah, I'll, in the next video, I'll be testing these fixtures out, both with these Lumilux bulbs and then bypassing the ballast and see what, what the one, well, I'm going to bypass one of the ballasts on one of these fixtures and I'm going to stick in party balls and see what it looks like because I've always wanted to see what they look like with green, red. And even compare one with a orange LED party bulb with a Lumilux bulb. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and stay tuned for more.